What if I just always was doing this? <laughs> Tom Haverford, if you will, works in Pawnee's Parks and Recreation Department. Turns me into Janet Snakehole. <laughs> All right, so Tom Haverford uh, is, of course, as you know, as a fan of Parks and Rec, uh, part owner of the Snake Hole, Pawnee's premier nightclub destination. The Snake Hole Lounge Heard of it? is looking for investors. No way. Yesterday, if you would ask me, I would have said no, but thank God my grandfather just passed away, so I am flush with cash. Uh, off the back of the success of the Snake Hole that he and John Ralphio own together, he creates snake juice, which he describes as being made by mixing together a bunch of alcohol, and some sugar and some coffee, and some other junk, and it kind of tastes like Kahlua. Well, it just so happens I know how to do that. I feel like there should be like a sound effect when I say snake juice. Like a Shadeko, right? Snake juice. Snake juice. That'll sound great. That'll be great. Where is my log of wool in 16? Hang on, camera. Turn this music down. Bossing, pooping, loving stuff. I'm back. Craft Services is in the other room. <laughs> One of the best things about snake juice is that it gets Ron Swanson drunk enough to dance like a fool, but like a happy fool. I love Ron Swanson, he's a great character. Um, and when the show started, he was like a big fan of old fashions, but then, some the fact that they were Lagavulin nerds and maybe a little bit of help from a little bit of sponsorship money changed their mind and he became a Lagavulin drinker. So I'm just gonna make this Lagavulin 16 old fashioned. Uh, so then they switched him to being Mr. Lagavulin when he had started out being Mr. Old Fashioned. Of course, the show is very different in season one. A lot of people don't like season one, but I think they're crazy. I think season one is a great season of the show. This isn't even the drink in the episode. We're just making it because it takes like zero effort to make. So oh, there we go. A little twist of lemon, orange, a little lemon orange, orange. We got to crossbreed an orange and a lemon and make orange. Put that down in my notes and my ideas for the future book. Uh, and there we have the Lagavulin Old Fashioned. Wait, my notes said I was supposed to make a drink called Steak Juice. Hold on a second. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> That's pretty good. It's um, the sweetness and the, the lemon and the bitters really actually moderate the Lagavulin's peaty smokiness. Uh, so we'll just keep this guy around. We'll just put it there. That's fine. Um, anyway, this drink has nothing to do with Lagavulin. This snake juice is basically rat poison. So we know it's a premium liqueur that tastes like Kahlua, has a lot of different alcohols and some other junk in it. Now, when I think of some other junk, I think of absinthe. So we'll be adding a little bit of absinthe to our mixing glass. You're gonna need one ounce of my coffee syrup. I make this by uh, combining a cup of coffee grounds with one cup of sugar and a half a cup of water and boiling it until it's all dissolved. Then I do my very best to strain it so that all the coffee grounds come out. But when I say all the coffee grounds, I mean all the coffee grounds that are smaller than my strainer because there's still plenty of coffee grounds in it. If you really wanted it to be ground free, that's an option. I don't have the patience for that kind of thing. So I just learned to enjoy its slightly gritty nature. I need one ounce of uh, Johnny Walker Red Label. This is a good question. Should it be red or black label? Or blue? Should it be blue label? Now, of course, we know that Tom uh, imagines himself to be a very posh man, uh, but he doesn't really have the kind of wallet space for that. My company's bankrupt, okay? Entertainment 720 is dead. In fact, when he wants to start his business, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ron Swanson digs up some of his gold bars for him. So I think that although Tom would love to put Blue Label in this, Red Label is more his budget. One ounce of cognac. You could use um, literally any cognac you want. It doesn't matter. I basically always use Pierre Ferrand's 1840 because it's then it's a variable I don't even need to worry about. I 
need a half an ounce of Lille Blanc. Mr. Tom Haverford and John Ralphio are both sophisticated individuals, and they know that if you want to make a drink classy, you got to throw a little something French in it. Lille, that's the answer here. Half an ounce. Oh. We need a quarter ounce of creme de cacao. I would recommend whichever one you happen to have. There's no reason not to use a dark creme de cacao here, but I happen to own a light one. Let's put two cubes of cracked ice into my shaker. Okay, now I'm gonna stir this drink. Uh, if you happen to have a brandy snifter, that's what they drink snake juice from in the show and it would be the appropriate drink, but Bed Bath & Beyond didn't have any, so we're drinking this from a wine glass. And frankly, it don't look half bad. Should I garnish that with anything? Hell no! Okay. This is snake juice. Um, strong coffee and beer nose, which is kind of weird because there's no beer in it, but it does smell like beer if I'm trying to be kind of objective. Probably because of the bitter notes. What it is probably that smells like beer is that coffee and alcohol kind of smells bitter, which smells like hops, which smells, yeah. Okay, here we go. Snake juice. Snake, snake, snake. Tastes like coffee and other stuff. It's great. So this is a little bit less sweet than Kahlua, which is, I think, nice, because drinking straight Kahlua wouldn't really be something I would want to do. It has sort of like this high frequency, um, high register, uh, coffee sharpness. I, I don't know how else to describe that, but the coffee notes, normally I think of car coffee as being like real bassy. Like coffee is like a, a brown flavor, it's a chocolate flavor, it's a bottom heavy flavor, kind of. This formulation, what you get is primarily kind of the lighter notes of the coffee. And I should say that the coffee that I used to make, this is a Mexican Chiapas fair trade coffee, so that might have some effect. Uh, it's a medium roast. If you had a different coffee, that would change that a lot. Um, and it, it, it's uh, bright and light and not very heavy at all, which is pretty cool. Um, it's sweet, there's no question, and the absinthe is present, but not overpowering. It's just sort of like this coffee absinthe synthesis that's happening. Did my knuckles make that sound? And it's surprising how good that is. I almost wanna go upstairs, make myself a pot of hot coffee and throw a drop of absinthe in it and see how it is. There's something, they're, they're contrasting flavors in the way that those things can really play off of each other and taste incredible when you put them together. When I was a kid, I used to love to take a chocolate eclair, an Entenmann's chocolate eclair, and a pickle and have them side by side, one bite at a time, because of the salty and the sweet thing. And there's a little bit of that going on in here. Oh man, that, uh, I did that until I threw up so bad. Burr Macklin died last night after the 10th shot of snake juice. Uh, drank to excess. Of course, this will make you throw up like chocolate eclairs and pickles, uh, but um, there's nothing in this that will cause you to instantly throw up. It's lovely. Or if you bottled this up and sold it as snake juice, people would buy it. Especially if you had John Ralphio's face on it. I mean, that face could sell just about anything. The world. How does it pair with the Lagavulin old fashioned? Poorly. Poorly. They are flavors that contrast in the worst way possible. This drink makes this drink taste like a dead animal. So I leave you with. I got it.